Hey guys, and welcome to another Ray Shadow Legends video with me, The Real Deal. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you can notice, but I am sweating buckets at the moment. Um, I am a sweaty Betty. Um, there's a heat wave going on in the UK at the moment. So it's only sort of 33 degrees. So I know it's not crazy, um, but apparently tomorrow it's going to be like 40 degrees, um, which is as hot as Egypt. So that is just insane for the UK. We're not used to this sort of hot weather, sort of. I don't know, 27, 28 is as, like, as hot as it normally gets, like at the very peak. So yeah, we're all struggling a little bit at the moment. So anyone in the UK and in Europe, you know, make sure you stay hydrated. And if you are going out in the sun, wear plenty of sun cream. So what is the best way to uh, cool off when it's super hot like this? Well, an ice golem tournament, of course. Um, so I'm just gonna do a checklist. So who should be doing this if you're sort of mid to end game tick go for it have you got epic champions yep go for it have you got those champions geared yep go for it and are you actually interested in the rewards yep go for it so what's really good about these sort of um um specific like only use these champions is that usually people don't really go for them so it's an easy way to sort of sneak in get some relentless gear or get some gems or get some energy and there's actually some nice rewards here as well so um, epic tomes aren't usually this low so it's quite easy to get an epic tome compared to normal and you can also get a void shard as well which they're hard to come by and you never know you might get that void legendary or epic that you're after and definitely save those for two times do not be pulling them in ten times if you're free to play and the other thing you may have noticed is you there's also a chance to get a either get the kale skin if you come first place or you can get sort of like 50 fragments so really good way to you know sort of get yourself a kale skin and this skin looks so bad ass i need to show you so let's just have a quick look at that so i just want to say first of first of all is that it is only kale and when you sort of get mid to end game you are going to stop using him and start using other champions however this skin is so cool. I love it. It looks so good. Sort of white, red and gold. And uh, it actually does look a bit like the English flag, which makes me very patriotic and proud. But um, yeah, but this skin is, the, out of all the new skins they've released, this is actually my favourite, which is a real shame because he's only a, a rare. It'd be so much better if this was on like one of the other champions. But anyway, it looks so good. Awesome, awesome skin. So... Let's have a look at, uh, we're gonna hop into Ice Golem and uh, look at some teams. Okay, so this is the first team comp, it's a solo comp. So we've got Eurogrim, who is, uh, you know, he can solo the Ice Golem, and the other champion that can do it is Dark Kale. As far as I know, they're the only two champions that can solo Ice Golem. Uh, Dark Kale's actually better, but unfortunately mine isn't geared or got the masteries yet. Um, but he, so he is the better option. Um, but they're both good champions and they can both do it. Um, Eurogrim's quite slow though. It takes about three and a half to four minutes to solo it. So that's why I've brought in Gembo and Skullcrown just to nuke the waves so we can get there faster. And they, you know, they'll do damage on the, the minions on Ice Golem as well. They can be replaced by any champion that does, you know, does AoE damage, hits hard. Um, so, you know, if they're Spirit Affinity or Magic Affinity or Void, they're great options. Just don't bring any force champions in because they will wipe and they won't do as much damage. Uh, we've got Geomancer in there. Um, so this little garden gnome, he pumps out damage. I'm sure everyone's aware of that. But um, he's going to put HP burn on the boss and reflect damage. And he's going to just help speed things up as well. So he's going to help the boss die faster. And then we've got Ugo in there. Who is going to, you know, decrease defense on the wave. So that's going to speed things up. Decrease, uh, you know the defense on the boss so that's going to help him drop faster as well and then that block buffs is just useful for the second wave because um they put out this like reflect damage buff so it just you know helps your uh you know your nuka stay alive then the other great thing about ugo as well is that she has a revive um so you know say for some reason you just happen to get unlucky with rng and you know the ice golem does smack you with a big hit Ugo's going to be like, it's all right, everyone's dead apart from me because I'm magic affinity and spirit doesn't do as much damage to me and she'll just revive the rest of the team. So, I mean, even if she, you know, 
even if it's just Ugo and Eurogrim, they'll still be able to do it, you know, together. But if, uh, you know, sometimes Eurogrim does actually die to the boss. So if that does happen, it's all right. Ugo's in there as our backup and she's going to bring up the team. So two minutes, 15, that is not bad at all. That is pretty fast. And this is a 100% success rate. So this is a great team comp. So let's move on to the next one. So this is team number two. So double Royal Guard, uh, Gorgorab, Vogoff and Madame. So basically we've got two Royal Guards in there just to smack hard, get through the waves as quick as possible and then help finish off the Ice Golem nice and quick with that big HP damage. So that enemy max HP damage. So Gorgorab is going to help keep us alive by reviving um, their magic affinity as well. So great against Ice Golem 20 with that spirit affinity. Uh, then we've got Vogoff, who's going to help keep us alive as well. So when Vogoff gets hit, uh, really important that you put them at the uh, in slot number five. So at the very end of your team. So when everyone gets hit, Vogoff will then heal everyone up. Uh, Madame, she's just in there to decrease that defense. She also strips um, that reflect damage on the second wave. And then also she has a um, decrease attack as well. So that's really important to throw that out on the Ice Golem boss. So that basically when he, you know, hits us with that big smack, everyone stays alive. Um, so I'm not a massive fan of using double Royal Guard um, on the Ice Golem. The reason for that is, is that they do have to have a lot of crit damage. And I believe you need to have sort of 280 plus. Um, unfortunately, I've had to re-gear both of my Royal Guards um, and reduce their crit damage for um, Hydra. So I think one of them... Uh, the one on the far right, he's got like 50k HP because he is built for Hydra now. And he doesn't have as much crit damage as he used to because you don't need as much crit damage for Hydra because it sort of caps lower. So um, I will check though, but I'm pretty sure it's around 280 that you need to have that crit damage uh, to sort of do Ice Golem faster. But you can do that, that's fine. But the only thing that I don't like about Ice Golem is say, for example, for some reason... The turn uh, turn order comes out of like um, out of sync. So say my Madame doesn't throw out decrease defense on the min on the side ads, then you're not going to drop them, and your team could potentially wipe. So I'm not. That's why I'm not a massive fan of using Royal Guards, and I'd rather go sort of slow and steady. I mean, other great champions you could bring in is like Fanax, uh, Fanax Phoenix. Um, the guy that basically he'll block when he single attacks the minions, he can block revive them. Uh, other great nukers that I might bring in is like Magna because he's got great survivability with that big HP. So yeah, so not as fast as the other run, 2 minutes 36. But uh, yeah, let's have a look at some other champions and then we'll have a look at gear as well. Okay guys, so I'm just going to quickly go through all the factions and give you the champions I'd recommend for Ice Golem 20, um, epics only. So Horden is a great option from the Banner Lords. Um, he can actually just cycle through the champions if you build him with enough crit damage and attack. So great, great option there. Uh, Gerhard, um, he hits really hard as well. So two great nukers there. Um, Stagnite is top tier for this. So decrease defense and uh, decrease attack. Um, Usala can revive. Great champion. And she also puts out Strengthen. Uh, Warcaster could also be used for block damage. Um, High Elves, we've got the Royal Guards, who we, you know, as we talked before, absolutely smack. Um, Tyrell, um, he's got control and decrease um, attacks, a great champion. Um, Sacred Order, the only champions I would use would be uh, Sanguina, underrated champion, she'd be great for this. Great survivability support. Uh, Fanex, um, hits really hard, hits really hard on his A1 and can block revive so it's really useful for the adds on the ice golem uh, deacon increases turn meter and throws out a uh, decreased defense as well so he's also a great option uh, cardinal light swarm god seeker and actually do you know what? even mistress and um, those are great revivers and could actually be brought in for this as well uh, unfortunately i wouldn't use any of the barbarians for this uh, ogan tribes ugo great champion uh, potentially you could use siege hulk he's meant to smack pretty hard but I don't really use them anywhere else, so I probably wouldn't recommend leveling one up just for this. Um, other great champion would be Maneater and Eurogrim. So Maneater, um, he has a decreased attack on his A1 
and then also block debuffs and unkillable so it helps keep your team alive great champion and Eurogrim showcased as earlier. Uh, Lizardmen, the only two that I'd use would be Jareg for survivability and support and healing, and Venomage for just, uh, does actually does quite a decent amount of uh, poison damage. Uh, Skinwalkers, you could bring in Double Taurus, um, but you'd need like a healer to keep them alive. Um, Orcs, obviously Seer is an obvious one, but like I said, she can actually fall, cause your team to wipe, so she can be a bit dangerous. Um, but there's no other orcs that I would use, I'm afraid. Uh, Demon Spawn, uh, Akoth could be a good option. Um, has uh, shields and HP burn. Uh, Magna and Dur, so Dur for um, survivability and revives, and Magna as a nuka. Uh, Padmea as well um, has decreased attack on the A1, so you could just lock out her A1 on the Ice Golem. To guarantee that you get that decreased defense, so you don't, uh, so your team won't uh, wipe, and that will definitely help increase your win rate to a hundred percent. So undead, we've got Gorgorab, um, like you've seen before, revive, great healing, uh, seeker, boosts your turn meter, and can just keep your team going. Also a bit of CC and do damage and increase your team's defense. Depends how you build them, but yeah, great champion seeker. Um, Dark Elhain can be really good for the boss but you need to be careful because she can just keep triggering that um that aoe damage and it can cause your team to wipe so you do need to be careful um so definitely make sure if you bring in dark Hain, you will need someone like padmea who is going to keep that attack down on the boss the whole time so you don't wipe um muslim mage you could potentially bring in for that um block debuffs and like and like vagoff as well great options so dark elves Dark Kale, as I said before, can solo this boss and will just hit so hard and throw out that decrease attack. So great option there. Uh, Rian could potentially be brought in as your reviver, but they are force affinity. Uh, Loria can be used as well. Um, Lua can be used as a new cut, and Sila and Madame are great supportive champions that you can use. Uh, Night Reverence, I would definitely recommend. Uh, Miscreated monster, um, you know, they're going to stun champions. They bring it a small shield, but he can help keep your team alive with ally protection. And they are uh, uh, magic affinity against that um, spirit affinity level 20 ice golem. Dean Priest could be brought in for healing and also um, removing that uh, freeze debuff from the ice golem. Uh, Sepulcher could be potentially used as well for decrease attack and block debuffs but she is the wrong affinity uh rector draft potentially could be used as well but again wrong affinity but they are a great reviver and a great healer and skull crown could be used as an aoe nuka so for dwarves uh grizzle joel can be used for a uh, block debuff so that can be useful on the boss um geomancer yep hp burn reflects damage great champion for this melga could be used as well she revives two champions um, and Gala, um, she's a great nuker as well, so potentially bring her in. And the Mitha, um, support champion with lots of healing and block damage. So, yep, definitely would recommend bringing her in as well. And unfortunately, with the Shadow King, I wouldn't bring the only champion I'd recommend bringing in would be Gembo as a nuker. But the rest of them, I don't really think I would bother bother using them. I'm afraid. So I'm just gonna give you some sort of bulk standard builds for nukers, support champions, and revivers. So with your um, Nuka, um, ideally you want Savage Gear, but you don't have to. You know, you can use like triple attack. You can use just crit damage. It really does depend um, on your champion. But this is just to give you sort of like a rough, uh, you know, idea, like a rough guide. So H um, HP 40k, that is really decent. That's pretty solid. Um, that's really going to help our Nuka stay alive. To be honest though, most are probably going to have about 30, which is fine. Um, so attack, you want to be aiming sort of between 4 to 5k. Um, speed, I'd say go for 200 plus. Crit rate, of course we want it to be 100%. And crit damage, you know, 220 plus is great. Um, and accuracy, not really important for Nukas, but it depends who they are. 200 will be plenty for Ice Golem 20. So of course we've got crit damage gloves, but if you can't reach it, that's fine. Swap it out for crit rate ones. That is fine. It's okay to do that. Um, so my uh, Seer is actually built for Doom Tower, so that's why she got an accuracy chest. 
Otherwise, I'd have that as HP or attack. Um, speed boots, perfectly fine. Then we've got an accuracy banner, which could be swapped out for an attack banner on different nukas. And of course, you've got to have a crit damage necklace on a nuka and attack ring. So um, her masteries aren't great for this. I'll show you what my masteries are for Seer, but Seer has very specific masteries. Um, I'm going to say show you uh, Trunda's masteries, who's like got more of a generic build that you could definitely use for um, a nuka. So Trunda, 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 where's my girl? There she is. So uh, this, oh, actually, am I in the way? Okay, so I'm just going to move myself out the way. No. One, give me one sec. I'm just going to move myself across. Okay, so actually, I've done one better, and I've just made myself invisible for now. Okay, so we've got crit rate. Um, shield breaker just to do more damage, but that's more for arena. Uh, just this will help speed up your runs as well because we're going to do more damage on the first hit that we do. Uh, cycle violence just to help us cycle through our abilities when we do big damage, so we get background to our abilities. Um, increase our crit damage, uh, increase more damage, do more damage, and then if we kill anyone, we're going to do more damage as well. So you could either take um, War Master or Helm Smasher. I'd say I would personally take Helm Smasher because you're going to do more damage in Arena and on your waves. And you're still going to do loads of damage to the boss, so it probably doesn't matter that much. So next, you could take Defensive Tree or Supportive Tree. Defensive Tree, I've just taken like a typical route just for survivability and to get counterattacks. You could, if you do need accuracy, you can just go into the Support Tree and just sort of take, you know, Point of Accuracy, going into Charge Focus, um, more basically just... Swarm Smiter is just going to increase our accuracy as well. And then you could take Evil Wide just to push back turn meter. And Law of Steel just to increase your stats a little bit. And say you do have a Poison Champion or some of HP Burn. You're probably going to take Master Hexer. Just extend the duration of any debuffs you cast. You can next. So this is a build for um, Revivers. So for your Revivers you're going to want HP Gloves and HP Chest. Um, you can get HP boots as well if you're lucky enough to have the speed. So my um, Godseeker is built really well. She is built specifically for Bommel. Um, however, I would say she could actually do with a bit more speed. So um, let's just have a quick look at her total stats. 80k HP is definitely overkill. Um, you could probably get away with, I would say, sort of you want 50 to 60k plus. Um, her defense could definitely be around sort of more 3k um, speed. I'll definitely aim for sort of 220 and above. Um, crit rate and crit damage are not important for Ice Golem, and she doesn't need accuracy. Um, you could get some resistance. It depends what champion you're running. So, if, say for if I Gorgorab, I definitely would want sort of like 250 resistance plus. Um, and then let's have a quick look at her masteries. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to go invisible again for the masteries. So we've got um, crit rate going into crit damage. This is just basically just to help speed up the damage that we do on the boss to help speed things up. Uh, life drinker just to help keep our HP topped up. Um, and yeah, just basically damage, damage, damage. Leading into war masters just to hopefully get those war master procs to do more damage and speed up the run. And then we're purely just going for um, survivability on the boss and just increasing our healing to ourselves. I mean, potentially with Godseeker, um, you could go support tree and take um, Steadfast. And then we'd want um, Lay on Hands. So basically just increasing the healing that we're doing and Healing Savior, um, Merciful Aid as well. And sorry. And then if your champion does say, for example, have um, any buffs, take Everlasting Gift. So that's a different uh, route you could take on the support tree. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at sort of supportive champions that throw out uh, decreased defense. So let's have a look at my Madame. So she's in triple perception. Doesn't have to be triple perception. You could put her in loads of different gear, um, like reflex set, you know, so she cycles around quicker. 
there's all sorts of different things you can do but we're just going to look at the stats that's the most important thing so stats we've almost got 60k hp so that's brilliant going to keep her alive um, we've almost got 3k defense as well she's nice and fast so basically you want her to be either your fastest champion on your team or second fastest basically she just needs to go before your nukas so um, yeah nice and fast accuracy is really important on her as well so you want sort of 250 and above um, mine's gone overkill because she's built for arena um, and crit rate and crit damage are not important she's just literally there to strip buffs decrease defense and throw out the de uh, decrease attack so we've got hp gloves we've got an accuracy chest which should be hp if you're doing pv only with them and then we've got speed boots and then it's going to be um accuracy banner hp uh, sorry hp amulet and defensive ring so basically just all about survivability so masteries um mine is actually built for um like i said for arena but we've just got loads of accuracy and then we're trying to keep our turn meter going um just trying to get more stats from law of steel um evil wire is really good for um arena but it's good for um pve as well it's just to help you know push back turn meter of champions so it's of, of your enemy really useful um master hex so just to keep those debuffs on as long as possible and more accuracy from eagle eye so you could you could actually use this build um but you know you could also use the build from um god seeker as well just to get that more damage on the boss and speed things up and take that war master and then defensive tree you know we've just got that survivability again and um, reducing crit which is actually from pvp but that's all right but uh, wisdom of battle has 30 percent of placing a block debuff on this champion for one turn when the stun, sleep, or freeze debuff expires on this champion. So the ice golem is going to freeze us. And then when it comes off, we're going to throw out block debuff. So it's just to help give her some more survivability. So that's a really like sort of good build to have on your um, defensive champions. Sorry, your supportive champions. And the other champion as well, actually, we can have a quick look at is um, Stagnite. So this is just a very, very standard build for Stagnite um yeah and as you can see like if i just lean a little bit to the left he's got war master down there bottom left but yeah standard standard build for uh stagnite and yeah actually another build you could uh route you could take is put them in a uh, shield set so that's just going to help keep you alive on the waves um for seer it's going to help her so another buff for seer to strip and all sorts of stuff so just, you know, when you're building your champions, you don't have to think so one-dimensional. You don't have to go, oh, they said to use perception, so I'm only going to use perception. There's so many sets in this game. And, you know, actually, let's just have a look at them. You know, you can use life set. You can use defense set. You know, all these sets are used. Accuracy set, resistance set. All these sets can be used. Like a day set, it can be useful. Regeneration is a great set. You can build your champions in different ways. Don't you don't have to think so one dimensional. Anyway, guys, um, that is pretty much the end of the video. Good luck for anyone that wants to have a go at this Ice Golem uh, tournament. Wish you the best of luck, and hopefully, you know, you get that first, second, or third place. Get that ancient shard. Get that void shard. Get that epic tome. Yeah, so it's so hot. I'm, I'm oh, god, I'm running out of breath. So anyway, please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Peace.